let's uh, do another piece. Okay, this was really uh, interesting news that broke yesterday. The Teamsters announced no endorsement for U.S. president. That's right. The Teamsters, breaking with a long tradition of endorsing Democrats, is not endorsing in the 2024 race, so they put this out as a press release on their site. The General Executive Board of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters on Wednesday elected not to endorse any candidate for U.S. president. After reviewing six months of nationwide member polling and wrapping up nearly a year of rank-and-file roundtable interviews with all major candidates for the presidency, the union was left with few commitments on top Teamsters issues from either former President Donald Trump or Vice President Kamala Harris and found no definitive support among members for either party's nominee. It's not exactly true, which we'll get to in a minute. The Teamsters thank all candidates for meeting with members face-to-face -face during our unprecedented roundtables. Unfortunately, neither major candidate was able to make serious commitments to our union to ensure the interests of working people are always put before big business. We sought commitments from both Trump and Harris not to interfere in critical union campaigns or core Teamsters industries and to honor our members' right to strike. That sound familiar? But we're unable to secure those pledges, said Teamsters General President Sean O'Brien. Quote, our mission as union representatives is clear, to be honest and upfront, to be inclusive, and above all, to be transparent with our membership. As the strongest and most democratic labor union in America, it was vital for our members to drive this endorsement process. Democrats, Republicans, and independents proudly call our union home, and we have a duty to represent and respect every one of them. We strongly encourage all our members to vote in the upcoming election and to remain engaged in the political process. But this year, no candidate for president has earned the endorsement of the Teamsters International Union. Okay, so they just said that neither of these candidates had definitive support, which is not exactly true. So they released their polling results from April, April to September. The Teamsters Union conducted in-person straw polls and commissioned independent polling rank-and-file members nationwide. So at the town hall straw polls among those who showed up in person, this was before Biden dropped out, of course, uh, from April 9th to July 3rd, the polling was Biden 44, Trump 36, RFK 5.6, and Cornell West 1.7. Now, the electronic member poll, which is up to September 15th, showed Trump winning pretty overwhelmingly. I mean, you can't really say that's not definitive. I mean, that's a landslide for Donald Trump. That's 60 to 34 with other candidates at 6.4. On yeah. the phone poll... Trump 58, Harris 31. Like, I'm sorry, if you're polling your members and you're saying, hey, we're going to honor the results of these polls, it's pretty clear the rank and file supports Donald Trump. Now, there are, I think, a couple of reasons why Biden edged out a narrow victory over Trump in the in-person poll and Kamala is so far behind. I think partly when you do an in-person straw poll event, you're talking about the most like politically active members of the union, the ones who actually go to the events. And yeah, the closer you get to union leadership, the more democratic you're going to be. But more importantly, I would argue, um, the Biden versus Trump poll was taken July 3rd before Sean O'Brien spoke at the RNC. And don't forget, Sean O'Brien spoke at the RNC, did not endorse Trump, but thanked them for having him. He wanted to speak at the DNC, and what did the DNC say? No, you're not invited. So that right. shifted public yep. opinion away from the Democrats as well, because the Democrats, because he had spoken at the RNC, he committed the sin of shopping his support around to the other party. They told him to go fuck himself when he asked to speak at the DNC. So those are a couple of factors that I think explain that disparity. But there's no question. I mean, if this were a union election where you're like, all right, we're honoring the will of the voters. Yeah, I mean, Trump won the endorsement pretty much. Pretty much. Did he not? I mean, fair is fair. I mean, that's not even close. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they just it's a residual from the long relationship between labor unions and the Democratic Party. Right. In exactly. the 20th century that the leadership is just not prepared to allow their members' voices right. to be heard to the extent of the freaking Teamsters 
right. endorsing the Republican candidate for president. So they just they took the coward's way out. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. Now, look, I personally think it's good that they didn't endorse either candidate. I think it's good for the labor movement to point out, hey, neither of these parties agreed to give us the right to strike. Neither right. of these parties would actually affirm their commitment to labor power when push comes to shove. We asked the Republicans. We asked the Democrats. Hey, we need a commitment that you're not going to do what they did to the railroad workers. Neither side would give it to them. So I think that right. says a powerful thing. However, if you are running it the way they said they're running it, we're the most democratic and transparent labor union. Well, I'm sorry. Donald Trump won the endorsement. I mean, he just did. You might not like that if you're the leadership. But if you're really going to honor the rank and file, he would have won the endorsement. They they would have endorsed him. But I want to go. I want to look into this a little bit more. Uh, this is later on in the press release. During the Teamsters rank and file presidential roundtables, the union shared feedback from members in the railroad and airline industries who work under the Railway Labor Act and are at the mercy of government intervention that often prevents work stoppages, as what happened. Uh, what was that? End of 2023 that happened, right? Was that? Um, no, no, that was the last. No, that was the year man, before. That was, that that was, was two years. 2022. 2022, We, right? we had yeah. really just started doing the YouTube show. That's right. Yeah. Before. See, I keep saying time flies. That's right. That yeah. was 2022. Wow. Um, while 10,000 Teamsters at United Airlines are currently negotiating a new agreement, tens of thousands of railroad Teamsters were forced to accept a new contract implemented by Congress without member support in 2022. There you go. Answered my own question there. Uh, in roundtable discussions with Trump in January and Harris this month, neither candidate promised not to intervene to force similar RLA contracts, which undermines workers' bargaining leverage. While Harris pledged, if elected, to sign the PRO Act, an essential piece of labor legislation strengthening union protections, and criticize dangerous right-to-work laws that are enacted to bankrupt unions, Trump would not commit to veto national right-to-work legislation if he returned to the White House. So I want to highlight this uh, tweet here from AOC, because the California chapter uh, of the Teamsters, as well as Nevada, Hawaii, and Guam, uh, bucked the national organization. They went ahead and endorsed Kamala Harris. And so here's AOC, the uh, you know so-called labor-oriented democratic socialist. Sean O'Brien has been boosting Republicans all year while supporting anti-worker, anti-choice Senate candidates. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris cast a tie-breaking vote to save Teamster pensions nationwide. Listen to your local. They know the score. Thank you, California Teamsters pack. So there she is being salty with the labor leader because her party failed to earn their endorsement. I thought the whole point of sending people like AOC there was in response to the fact that Democrats had taken labor power for granted and that this is part of holding the party leadership accountable to labor and labor organizations. Instead, she adopts the party line, which is this guy committed, you know, a, a a treasonous act by appearing on stage at the RNC. Therefore, he's boosting Republicans. Therefore, we don't want him. He has the ick factor on him. And so screw right. him. And thank you to the state chapters here who fell in line. And um, I don't know that these were the only state chapters to fall in line, but I assume they are because that list is pretty small. And you would think if they wanted to make a statement, they would print a list of all the state chapters uh, who endorsed Harris and Waltz. But our friend Nick Cruz responds to AOC. They're, they're very big in Guam. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, huge in Guam. The Teamsters president made it clear that they are not endorsing Kamala because she broke the rail strike. Remember how you helped the Biden administration break the rail strike? That's the reason they're not endorsing. I think he's absolutely right about that, because if you look at the press release, that's they spent they they spill a lot of ink about that Railway Labor Act yeah. enforcement. Yeah. And they go on to say here in the second paragraph of this slide, uh, they did see examples of Harris giving more to them than Trump did, uh, i.e. she promised to sign the PRO Act. And she's saying that she will veto uh, right to work laws. Um, so they're saying, hey, like there were areas where we prefer the Democrats, but obviously that breaking up of the rail strike was a real sticking point. And not only did that make an impact when Biden and Harris did it, uh, but Kamala Harris did not promise not to do it again. 
she did not promise to right. lay off. Right. Hey, if this comes to a head again, because I think the contract is, I think the contract expires. Well, it will definitely have expired by Harris's second term if she wins and is reelected, but I'm pretty sure it expires in the first term. Um, so, hey, when this comes up for negotiation again, are you going to do what Biden did and just override our labor action and dictate the terms of our contract in law the way you did? Or are you going to let us go on strike? She did not commit. She did not commit. And that seems to be a huge reason, if not the reason, based on what I've read there, uh, why they withheld their endorsement. And while, yes, I mean, if they honored the uh, commitment of the rank and file, uh, they would have endorsed Trump. It still is very significant that they have not endorsed a Democrat. I mean, this is decades, decades of tradition that the Teamsters endorse Democrats. And so this is the first time in a while where they're not endorsing at all. Yeah, this um, is something that seems to to be reflected in the political attitude across the board. Uh, you know, Nick is articulating it very clearly. He's definitely seeing through things through this lens. Um, the only way you have any chance of getting any kind of control over the Democrats is to punish them. And even that, frankly, is probably not going to work because in the end, they answer to the money people. Right. But what's absolutely not going to work is they keep spitting in your face and you keep saying, well, the other guys are worse. Let's keep right. it real. The Republicans are worse for labor. That does not mean the Democrats are good. Right. Are the Republicans worse? Of course they are. Of course they are. Uh, they're they're uh, in turn what they're talking about with the pensions. Uh, from what I know, the Republicans all voted the other way on preserving their pensions. So what do you think they're going to do with power? Um, well, the Amazon drivers union effort, it, you know, under a Republican controlled NLRB, the NLRB would be an obstacle to that union drive. Exactly. I mean, they and, just and would. So, I mean, really, yeah, fair so is fair. Let, yeah. let, let's be realistic. Right. Trump can go up there and talk about the forgotten man all he wants. How do you know a thing by what it does? Right. And what the Republicans do is fight against labor power. Right. Uh, no question about that. But Angela Davis recently came out and said there was going to be more room for radical movements under Harris. And I would say it's quite the opposite. That kind of a Republican backlash against labor is going to further radicalize people as the past eight years have radicalized people. You finally got a fair number to the point and with the Israeli genocide, uh, lending a lot of fuel to that fire and pushing it over to the top, uh, where you got a lot of people who started on this Bernie Sanders journey and have just more and more been kicking and screaming to try to gain control of the electoral process through the democratic party and just more and more and more are done. And you're seeing a critical mass of it. I think in this election where people are saying, well, as, as our friend, professor Zenka said, if they know they can get your vote after committing genocide, supporting genocide, they know there's nothing they can't do to you. Right. And I think a lot of people are realizing that. So the logic, of the Teamsters not backing the Democrats is the same as everybody's logic. Well, maybe next time they'll feel like they have to earn your vote. Maybe next time they won't back uh, breaking a railroad strike. Maybe next time they won't back a genocide. It's, uh, it's basically what Kim Iverson said in our interview with her, that in the end she prefers Trump because the Democrats just cannot be rewarded for the behavior that they've displayed. Please clap.